Fantastic. I would love to try this, but can't afford all that equipment. Hmm. We're doing something about that. All right, so here's what I found at Lowe's. It's a coupler of some kind. And the cool thing about it is it fits Jason's dies perfectly. So what we're gonna be doing is sizing a coin ring without using a press or any kind of special equipment. So this is going to fit our die in it. We can put our coin ring in there that needs to be sized, and we can put our anvil on top, and then hopefully hammer it down and size the thing. So we're gonna see if this works. But what you need to do right now is cut this thing in half. So the first step, get rid of these screws. Then we'll mark this thing out and then cut it. So you can use a hacksaw, but I have the benefit of a grinder, so I'm going to be using the grinder. So I think we're going to clean it up on the sander. And here's the coin we're going to be turning into a ring today. It's just a regular old non-silver quarter. This one happens to be a Georgia state quarter. And the first step we're going to need to do is cut a hole in this thing. And a fancy auto centering punch that you can get from Jason at Jason's Works works fantastic, but they're really expensive. So when you're starting out, you definitely don't need that. I'm going to show you how to measure and then cut a hole in your coin with just a pen and a drill. So the first step we need to do is find the perfect center of this coin. And the way we're gonna do that is with this pen. And we're going to set something up next to the coin. That's kind of more or less the height you're gonna need. So this stack of business cards will work just fine. And then put your coin up against it like that and then rest your pen on whatever you decided to stack up next to it and then spin it. And now we have a perfectly centered circle on our coin. And the next step now is to punch this so that way we have a nice centered divot to start drilling with. All right, perfect. Time to drill it out. And now to drill this thing, we're gonna drill it on some block of wood that we don't mind getting damaged. We're gonna put our coin on there. And I'm gonna try something a little bit different today. I'm thinking in order to hold this coin steady while we're drilling it, instead of trying to hold it while it heats up or clamp it, I'm gonna try just taping it as tightly as I can to this board and we'll see if that'll work. And this is probably the most expensive part of the whole process. And if you don't have a drill, borrow one from a friend. And if you don't have a friend that has a drill, you really do need to reevaluate your friend choices. Oh, shnikes. All right, so the tape thing didn't work. We'll still clamp it. And the tape's actually gonna protect the coin, so there you go. It's not working at all. All right, so the tape thing didn't work. I'm going to go ahead and clamp it. And this is a good example of seeing the hole that's not perfectly centered. Now, this, if the hole goes off center for 
for whatever reason, maybe the drill bit slides or, or anything like that, you're just going to remark a hole in a really similar way that we marked the center, right around the outside, and then just file your way to where it's perfectly centered again. Okay, so now you can see the area we need to cut out. So we'll just do that with a half round file. One hour later. All right, it looks pretty even all the way around now. And just take your time in this step. It's really important you get a nice, evenly done ring. And so that one looks really darn good. So I think we are good to go to the next step. Get a little 120 grit sandpaper and just make sure you sand the inside really, really good to make sure it's nice and smooth and there's no rough edges inside at all. And now that we have our coin like this, we need to anneal it before we start to fold this thing. Now, can you fold this without annealing it? Yeah, you can, but you're going to increase the chance of splitting the coin and it's going to be a lot more effort to fold it that way. But it's definitely possible if you don't have a torch and you want to do this anyway. Yeah, go ahead and give it a shot. But what we're going to do now is anneal it. And this is going to be softening the metal, making it a lot more bendable without splitting. Now that it's annealed, we're going to be putting it on our mandrel and then start hammering it down this mandrel. You could use a Harbor Freight teardrop mallet or pretty much any other mallet you have. I personally like a rawhide mallet, so that's what I'm going to be using. Make sure you're holding on tight to your coin as you're hammering it down and move your hands out of the way as you go. And that's going to ensure you get a nice even fold. So we hammered it down that far, so we're going to pull it off, re-anneal it so we're re-softening this thing, and then putting it back the other way so we can hammer it the rest of the way. It's also a good idea at this point to re-sand this cut edge, so that way you know you're not going to get any cracks forming. If you see one, file it out with a file or sand it out with a sandpaper. Looking good. You can see at this point, this ring is closed up really nicely around the mandrel. There's no weird spots sticking out really or anything like that. And that's key to getting a good looking ring here in the next step. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off the mandrel, re-anneal it again, and then we're going to start to size it. This is where this coupler comes into play. Now we've got it all cut down and it fits our die that we're going to be sizing in. And now the die we're going to be using today is from Jason's Works. It's a 0.9 by 1.0 17 degree die. And this one's going to be fitting in the 0.9 side. If you were to look at this ring, it's wider on the top than it is on the bottom. And it's got a cone shape, which doesn't look really nice. Right now this ring measures at about eight and a half. So if we wanted it to be any smaller, we're gonna have to reduce it in a die. So we'll slide it in there. And if you have some Pepe lube, that's a really good idea to use. It'll just help everything slide down the die a little bit more. If you don't have anything like that, you can use just bar soap if you want to. So we'll set that coin edge facing down in our die. Put our coin anvil on top. That also comes from Jason's Works. And now we're going to be hammering. Okay, check it out. We dropped it from an eight and a half all the way to about a six. So now it has a cone shape the other way a little bit. So we're going to put it around this side down in the die and then size it down and make the two sides match. All right, check that out. A sized ring without a press, without a coin stretcher reducer. How awesome is that? Say you wanted that even smaller than a size six. 
Well, you can go down a 9 by 1.0 25 degree die and then reduce it down even farther in that. And now to finish this ring up, we will just get rid of some of this oxidation with some 4 out steel wool. And then polish it up with a disposable jewelry wipe. Now I know what you're asking yourself, well what if I want to make it bigger? Well that's going to have to wait for another installment. Got some ideas there too without any presses. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel and then also check out the rings I make on my website, changeyoucanwear.net. Alright guys, till next time.